In April of this year, the first landing 1607 project held an event in Virginia. I was asked to go. You're going to see I just got off a plane. I didn't even comb my hair because I traveled with men, so nobody said. Um, but what I said off the cuff that night, we have wanted to share with you for a while. Put up with the video of me looking horrible and listen to what was said. What is happening is not an American thing. This should be, and I'm so glad it's being translated in so many different languages, this is a message to the world. What media is not showing you is this is happening all over the world. The people are rising up, and it's, it's not right and left. It is really, truly elites versus the people. Right. We can sit in our own communities and we all talk like this, we all say it, this isn't that hard to fix. We all know what the problems are. It wouldn't take many of us very long to fix this thing, okay? Because all you have to do is return to principles. But yes. everything is being changed. It is a fundamental transformation. I really truly believe th Satan thinks he's gonna win. <laughs> He's convinced he's got everything cornered and everything's going to happen. He is in for a real surprise. Um, so everything we talk about here, everything that you guys have done, this needs to go to the entire world. They're all looking for an answer, but America is currently the only place that that has enough God in us still, that there's a remnant yeah. that remembers. Yeah. I talked to somebody who had, um, she was uh, over at a friend of mine's house. She was, she escaped communist China. She was in a prison camp. And uh, she came over to my friend's house and it was Christmas time and they were gonna decorate the tree. And he said to her, here, this job, this job, this job, and why don't you untangle the lights? Before long, she was sitting uh, on the ground with the lights and she was just sobbing. And he said, are you okay? And she said, yes. While I was in prison in China for believing in Christ, these were the lights I was making. And uh, she said to me, do you know what we pray for, the faithful in China? And I said, no, and she says, that America will fall. And I said, <laughs> wait, why? She said, because then and only then you'll remember who you are. You'll be humble again and you will listen to the Lord. I know this to be true in my own life. I am an alcoholic. Um, I, by the time I was 30, I was completely out of control. I was somebody that was, at 13, I got into radio. Um, and I have been doing it and, you know, I started to buy my own bull because um, uh, thinking I'm just the greatest guy ever and uh, I wasn't and I made every possible mistake you could possibly make by the time I was 30 uh, I just I was completely out of control I lost my family I lost my career I lost everything and the only thing only thing that I begged the Lord for and only when you get to this point to where you are on your knees because you can no longer stand the only thing I wanted back besides my family was my integrity I just wanted to let my yes be yes and my no me no and people would believe me and I begged him I will do anything Lord I have screwed everything up and I white knuckled it for about four years. And when I finally stood in the waters of baptism, I wept uh, because I knew that God ceases to be God if he doesn't keep his part of the bargain. And I knew 
that he said he will take my sins, he will take my burdens, and he will relieve me of all of that. I can start all over again. All I have to do is live by the things he says to do. And I stood in the water, and I, I, I urge you to consider everything that you're doing today, because I was foolish enough, I was desperate, so desperate, that I challenged him. He proved me now. And so I said to him in my head, as just before I'm about to go under the water, I said, you cease to be God if you break your side. <laughs> Don't ever say this. I will not break my side. How arrogant, even in my humility, I was arrogant. Um, I will tell you, I don't know why the Lord even is my friend. Um, he is a loving father. Um, but uh, I, I changed. I fundamentally changed on that day. And I really feel bad. I would, I would, I tell my kids, don't do what I did. But I kind of feel bad for people who don't need the atonement as badly as I did, because when you really need it, you understand what a powerful miracle that is. There was no way out for me. Everything I did, he suddenly, with just one commitment, took everything that I did that was horrible, that I was hiding, that I was ashamed of, and he turned it into a tool for his good. Yes. It's miraculous how that happens, okay? It is true. I first want to bear my testimony to you that God knows you. He knows our situation. He knows the people who are currently so deceived that they are standing against him. They are his children too, and yes. he wants all of us back. Yes. I made a promise to him after my baptism, and my life changed literally overnight. I couldn't find a job for two years. I was looking for a job trying to do talk radio. Nobody would hire me. I was a top 40 clown. And nobody really wanted to work with me because I was extraordinarily arrogant. And um, the day after my baptism, the largest uh, agent in radio called me and said, hey, I was talking to somebody. They said that uh, you're really talented and that you're trying to change your life. You need an agent. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. And uh, he said, I'll call you back in a couple of days. I want to check out on you. And I'm thinking, the guy won't take 10% of my money. Um, and he called me back two days later. It was on a Wednesday. And he said, I've checked you out. You seem to be sincere. And I said to him, really? So you wouldn't have taken me? Um, and he said, in talk radio, people know. That you, can't, you cannot be on the air for three hours every day without people figuring you out eventually. And he said, I don't want somebody who's a fraud. And uh, I said, great. And then he talked to me about, we got to get you in touch with so-and-so. Do you know so-and-so? And I said, I don't. And he said, well, we got to figure out a way to get you in touch with him because he can really place you in the right place. As he was saying this, God's, God is my witness. My call waiting went off, and it was that guy he was talking about, and he offered me a job, first time in talk radio. My career went like this, almost straight line up. In two years, I, I had a prompting, my first, or Stu is so uh, grateful, I had a prompting when I was on the air the very first time just trying talk radio. I finished my first 10 minutes, and I took off my headphones, and I said, we're going to replace Dr. Laura. And he went, why don't we finish our first show? <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, I don't know. This sounds crazy, but I know I've only done this for 10 minutes, but we're going to replace Dr. Laura. 
Uh, I was doing talk radio for two years, and uh, I went from worst to even worse than that to suddenly rocketing to number one um, and a commanding lead. And uh, Premier Radio, the biggest talk syndicator in the world, called me and said these words, we're looking for a replacement for Dr. Laura. <laughs> okay? That's like, that's like four years had passed and he, I get the call. I'm supposed to start in January 2002. We sign a contract with him. January, or September 11th happens. Now I'm doing a comedy show and uh, I know nothing. I'm a recovering alcoholic DJ. <laughs> I'm not the guy to talk to the nation about anything serious. And uh, I get a call from the company and they said, why aren't you on the air nationally today? And I went, uh, I think that's your decision. <laughs> And he said, we need to get you on the air now, nationally. So three days after 9-11, I did my first national talk show. And uh, the first thing I said to the nation was, I, 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 I don't have any answers. I don't have any answers. This is not the time I was prepared for. But I promise you, I will look for the answers. And I, I, I'm just going to look like we're all looking for answers and I'll do my best and I promise you I will tell you the truth. Um, I begged those three days waiting for that show, I begged the Lord, you got the wrong guy. You have the wrong guy. I don't know any of this. And I was overwhelmed with the feeling, I know, I got gotcha. you. You will be obedient because you just challenged me. <laughs> Believe me, God wins every time. Hey, let me ask you about your dogs. Um, if you have a dog, do they eat? Mine would not eat anything. Um, and he's a German Shepherd and their hips always go and everything else. I, uh, I happen to know naturopathic doctor Dennis Black and he's the guy who came up with Rough Greens. And he was telling me about, you know, the health of the dog and blah, 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 blah. And while I am concerned about that, I just wanted my dog to eat. He would never eat. So I tried Rough Greens. He wolfs it down. But not only that, I think it has actually given Uno maybe an extra year of life. I have nothing to back that up other than my other German Shepherds did not act as young as he's acting now. And my other German Shepherds never got rough greens would you just try a free bag of rough greens right now they'll send you the first one free you just pay for shipping go to roughgreens.com slash beck roughgreens.com slash beck in 2008 he starts 2004 actually he starts downloading things and this i'm on fox in 2008 and as i see as he shows me these things it was like it was a um, a flat wall, there is no time. I didn't realize this at the time. There is no time where God is. It's, he just showed me everything that was coming at once. Wow. And I was very freaked out because it felt like it's on top of us. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always say I'm really bad at timing because I don't know his time. He has just shown me a few things to warn people. My calling has been to just warn. I have begged him for answers. I have begged him, please, Lord, let me, let me, I don't want to be hated by half the country. I, I, I please, can, can you give me one solution that I can give to the people? And he's been very clear, that is not your calling. Wow. Your calling is to warn the people. Wow. So I have tried to be faithful. Um, and it sucks, <laughs> but it's been good to be in his service. Mm -hmm. yes. I will tell you mm -hmm. that about three weeks ago, I was praying and um, I, I could hear it almost like it was audible. Everything's about to change. Your life is about to change. I need you with me every day for the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I went and I carved out time every day for two solid weeks 
just to pray and to study and be with him. And I will tell you that um, two weeks into it, I didn't get anything. And I was like, was this a test? <laughs> you tested me just to see if I would show up every day? Because uh, he wants to know. This is, a, this is an honest question. Thomas Jefferson said, question with boldness even the very existence of God. For if there be a God, he must surely rather honest questions over blindfolded fear. Yeah. Okay, what a great line. That changed my life. And it will change your life too if you understand the difference between questions and honest questions. An honest question is one that if I answer it and it goes against everything that you believe, but you're like, oh crap, that makes sense. Will you apply it to your life? Yeah. Okay? Yes. Honest questions only come from people who are saying, you could change my mind. I'm open. I want to know the truth, whatever it is and I will change my life. That's very frightening for people to do. When I accepted God, I had to change everything in my life. Everything, my whole friend structure, everything turned upside down. I did more things and I'm like, oh, come on. I don't wanna do that too, really? <sighs> Can I have any fun? His answer to me then was, no, I realize now it's much more fun to live under his oh, rules. Yeah. Oh, right. um, so the reason why I'm telling you this story is because two weeks ago just ended last Friday. And I, I'm not sure yet because while I knew I had to show up, and he got a little mush mushy with me and is like, you figure it out. Um, and I think what he's telling me is something that I've prayed for for a long time. Uh, I think he's releasing me from my calling, my calling to warn. <clears throat> There's a new calling coming and it is hope. Yes. Yes. All those that could hear the warning have heard the warning. Right. It's time now to join with people yes. and focus. Yeah. He wins. Yes. Yes. I don't know what that means for us, but he wins. He, he has us. Yes. The one thing I got in the last, last two weeks is, I know you. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Let it go. You know, when, when Satan, you know, comes up to... Uh, the Lord, it's not like the Lord is like, oh, I'm going to meet Satan again today. And, uh, you're dismissed. Yeah. You're dismissed. Get out of here. That's all he has to say. We have to say, because we're not God, in the name of Jesus Christ, get out. Okay? And we need to do that more because... That's what we're fighting. We are not fighting Republicans or Democrats. Right. We are not fighting our friends and our neighbors, even the people who are trying to destroy us. That's not who we're fighting. We are fighting the spirit of the Antichrist. We are fighting evil. And that's the only answer I can come up with when you actually look at what's happening to yeah. our country yeah. and how hypnotized people are. Yeah. I never understood how light wouldn't understand dark, that the two sides wouldn't understand each other, that you'd be so separated that you could not truly understand the other side. Yeah. Well, we're here. Yeah. And the reason why is because Satan is chaos and confusion. Yes. The yes. Lord is clear. Yes. Yes. Satan causes confusion and chaos. Deception. This world is confused and in chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Depart in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah.
You know, to save our country, one of the things we have to do is have a parallel economy. Um, and that means not doing business with people that are just stabbing the Constitution in the back all the time. Um, but doing business with people who hold the same values, are working to the same goals, and have at least the same service, if not better, and will save you money. If you can do that, uh, that's not, you know, guaranteeing your, or, or pledging your life fortune and sacred honor. That's just doing the smart thing. This is the easiest way to be able to help our country, and that is switch to Patriot Mobile. They are the only Christian conservative uh, provider for cell service in the country. They support free speech, religious freedom, sanctity of life, all of that, and they fight for it. So please, switch today. They make it really easy. Keep your own phone and phone number, everything else. PatriotMobile.com slash Beck. PatriotMobile.com slash Beck. 878-PATRIOT. You know, Martin Luther King was not the first choice for anybody in the civil rights movement. He was like number eight. Okay? Why? Because there's a lot of preachers, just like there's a lot of preachers today, that are too afraid to offend right. or to lose their, their church yeah. or to lose their position or God forbid people won't give so I won't be able to make the bills. Where do you find that in scripture? Leave. Do not worry about your next meal, your clothes or your money. Leave and do it. The Lord is asking you and everyone here and everyone watching because he's gone to the people, the elites. He's gone to all the people that said, no, no, no I got this. You should come to me and go to my church and I'll tell you what's going on. Those people won't do it. And so he's coming to us and we're like, really? <laughs> me? I mean, if anybody has been called on by the Lord lately, and if you haven't, you will be. If you hear the Lord, your first reaction, I'm guessing, is, you've got to be kidding me. You're down to me? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because you may... You know, never understood this scripture. The Lord will use the foolish yes. Yes. to confound the wise. Yes. Wow! We're watching it in real time. Yes. There is no one more foolish than me. And they cannot figure us out. Evil does not understand. Evil is arrogant. And I fear... I'll speak about me, that I am too arrogant, that I, I believe, you know, uh, that I've done great things or anything. I know what I create. I know what I do. I have a whole 30-year record of what I'm capable of. These last 30 years, are what the Lord is capable of. And he, he just can use anyone who is humble and knows you're his. You're his child. He loves you. There is nothing he wa doesn't want to give us. There is no power that he doesn't want us to share with him. He is the best father and the best friend you'll ever have. And he is just saying, are you willing to come with me? One of the things that I, I remember in the first, I think it's Lord of the Rings or one of those, Gandalf says, uh, Frodo says to Gandalf, I just wish none of this would be happening in my time. And Gandalf says something that I heard once, and it has stuck with me for 25 years. We all wish that. All people that live in times like this wish it would happen in another time. But that is not our decision to make. Our decision 
is to decide what we're going to do with that time. Yes. Our decision, and it is such an honor. Yes. It is such an honor. It is. He has not only asked you, but he is qualifying you to work in his service yes. on one of the greatest, most miraculous things that has ever happened. And that is prepare the way for the second coming. This is, we are on the verge of losing, not our freedom. That's right. His freedom that he gave to us and said, governments are established among men to protect those rights. We established, we established this government to protect those rights. And we have been so fat and sassy and lazy and, and we are so arrogant with all the things that we have. We think we can rule the world. We actually are now living in a time we think we can change the weather. How arrogant. And we have stopped looking and just thanking him. Just start there. Yes. If our country was just grateful, yes. yeah. even, I, I'm, I'm telling you, yeah. if you're living a life right now and you just change it in a few years, you're going to see the Lord has taken that snot and turned it into something amazing. He is truly amazing. We just have to be grateful and humble and do what he asks. Here's how you know he's talking to you. If he's asking you to do something, you're like, oh, come on. I know, I know, I don't want to do that. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. He's never like, you know what? I'm going to call you to go on vacation for a few weeks. <laughs> Don't think about me or anything else. That ain't God. God is calling and qualifying all of us. In 2008, um, I got a, a, a... All I heard in my prayers was clay pots. And I'm like, what? What does that mean? I'm like, Lord, you created me. You know I'm not that smart. What does that mean? And I didn't know. And for six months, every night, every morning, I would pray, I'd hear clay pots. Okay. So, you know, I don't know, am I supposed to go to like Pottery Barn and look for some clay pots? I have no idea. And it was six months into it, and I said, the spirit of the people that we are that are trying to take our country. They hate this country. They hate it. And they will, if they win, and this was a quote, I said just spewing words, if they win, our sacred American scripture, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the thing that all of our founders said was the finger of God writing that, they will destroy it all. And that's when I remembered clay pots, when people were coming to destroy the scripture that hadn't fallen into the canon, a small community took all the scriptures they could find and put them in clay pots and pushed them into the back of the cave. That's when David and I started really doubling uh, our efforts. David has been collecting American uh, history forever. We now have, between him and me and Mercury One, my charity, we now have uh, more documents on the American founding, and we go back now to like the 1500s even, uh, we have, we're only beaten by the National Archives in the Library of Congress. Um, wow. 
And we have, our goal is to not only preserve it, if we have to find clay pots in a cave or whatever that is, these documents will survive, okay? That we will not be erased. We are doing the erasing ourselves by standing by, but we, it will not be lost. It was God's work. We've screwed God's work up many times, but if we just turn back to him, he'll make it all right. The other thing on clay pots, because I just, he never gave me a clear, <laughs> never gave me a clear answer. And I swear, I'm going to get up to heaven, and he's going to go, that clay pots thing. I mean, I was just thinking about clay pots, and you happen to tap in. I mean, it was cool what you did, but that was you. Um, but the other way I've interpreted it, because I want to be faithful to him, was our children are our clay pots. Ah. I don't see a lot of young people here. Our children are living at a time... I would never want to be them. I don't know. I, as a parent, my kids come to me and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. How do I, you know, I'm like, well, let me think about that. I'm going to think about that. And I, you know, I got some good advice for you soon. And then I walk into the other room and I tell my wife and she's like, you're looking at me for an answer? I don't know what I don't know that. They're doing things now that seem insane yes. to anyone who has not, has not gotten off the path of God, okay? God provides us the truth, and it is unchangeable. There are some things that we can discover, you know, like the microwave oven, but there are other things that are just eternally true, period. Yes. Men are men, women are winder, uh, women, Gender is specific and ordained by God. Yeah. And we have, because we're a very tolerant people, we have gone, you know what? Good for you. Good for you. Because we didn't think we were dealing with evil. But when you can say, Love wins. That's why, you know, who are you to say these two people shouldn't be together? Because love wins. That works for a lot of people. But if you know the true agenda behind it, you don't, you realize there's no love involved in this, okay? This is not love. This is evil. Because they take that, you want to be tolerant. Now, in, in Minnesota... I think you know this, yeah. Michelle. In Minnesota, yeah. they are changing the Democrats, yeah. yes. and explain this to me, the Democrats are changing the Civil Rights Code yeah. to delete the phrase of, you know, everybody is a special group. It says pedophilia and pedophiles are not a protected class. The Democrats are removing that line by a legislative act. Why? Why? We are sacrificing our children to the God of the Old Testament, Baal and Moloch. It is happening again. We don't know it, but we are repeating the same thing over and over again. And I, I loved what a speaker said when I just got here. What was his name? I'm so sorry. Alex. I loved what you said about, and we still send our kids to school yes. because we don't know what to do and we don't feel qualified because we've been raised in a time when the experts tell us what to do. Right. Stop listening to the experts. There is one expert, one. Wow, this is horrible video of me. I mean, I look really bad here, but wow. Uh, okay, anyway, let me talk to you about uh, the title to your home. Why? Because a lot of people are becoming victims of home title theft. It's the fastest growing crime 
according to the FBI. It is, uh, well, that and the people of January 6th, but somehow or another, Dan, uh, uh, Donald Trump is behind the, the horrible crime wave that is going on right now. Home title lock, make sure that you have not uh, lost your most valuable asset, your home. They put a shield around your home's title. It is unbelievably easy to steal it, and you won't know until the bank starts sending you notices and eventually the sheriff shows up to your door because you don't own your home anymore. Find out right now about your own house and sign up for protection. Promo code BECK, HomeTitleLock.com. That's HomeTitleLock.com. Now I want to talk to you about something that um, I thought about on the plane here, and I've been thinking about this for years, and I've tried to prepare my audience, and if you've listened to me for a long time, there were probably many times in the last 15 years where you were like, I got it. Why are you even talking about this? because he told me to talk about it when it didn't make any sense. But I have to reiterate this. Do you know where the first transgender surgery happened? The first trans man, so uh, man wanted to become a woman, um, and the surgeons, you know, took care of business and even stuffed a uterus in this guy, okay? He died, do you know where that happened? Germany, 1920, okay? Germany, 1920, the Weimar Republic did everything that is happening in America right now, okay? Absolutely everything that we are doing was happening in the Weimar Republic. You know who stopped it? Hitler. Okay, that's not good. What's your message there, okay? Here's my message. The Weimar Republic became so vile and violated everything that good, decent people knew was right and wrong. It became so ugly and distorted that people were willing to say, he'll stop it, yeah. okay? And it only took a third of them. I don't know if you know this, but the churches under Hitler, within six months, they were seriously talking about getting rid of the Old Testament because it was a little too Jewy. Did you know that? Yeah. Six months it has a lot of Jewish stuff in it. Oh, uh, yeah, like Jesus also was a Jew. Okay? They folded like that. Within a year, they had taken Christ off of the altars and replaced it with a picture of Adolf Hitler. Wow. Yes. What God are we worshiping right now? What God are our children worshiping right now? You will become that which you gaze upon, you will become. Yes. Yes. When you are gazing, what are people worshiping? Their phones. Yeah. And our kids are becoming just like phones, completely detached, yeah. robotic, there's no, there's nothing there, and they're zombies. And I contend that we are actually worshiping that technology. I do two things like this. Look at my phone and pray. We are praying to our God. What happens when a society goes off the rails this much and there is no true, strong leadership for God. People start to become angry and twisted and the righteous feel, I have righteous indignation and yeah, get them. The people that went to the concentration camps the first ones were not Jewish. The first ones were anyone who disagreed with the government and lesbians and transgenders, okay? Because everybody was sick of all of that stuff and so let's get rid of them. The, Satan does not destroy things, 
he perverts them. This country is the greatest tool for good or evil in the history of the world. I said in 2008, if we don't change our ways and reconnect with the things that are true, we are going to make the Nazis look like rookies. And we will. We are not fighting for our freedom. We are fighting we're fighting madness and evil, and we must stand. But you will not survive if you don't make a covenant with him. I know this. I know this all too well. It is easy to go through your day and just do the things that you know you think you're doing the lord and yeah yeah i got it i got it i'm doing it but if you are not with him if the spirit does not dwell in your home with your family inside of you if you're not getting constant feedback from the holy spirit you're not going to make it there's coming a time where the spirit will say stop turn around, go the other way. You will be convinced you're doing something and the spirit will tell you, "Uh uh-uh, don't do that, okay? And you must be so attuned to the spirit that you hear it and obey it. Honest questioning. God is asking you an honest question. If I give you this information, will you do it? Your answer must be yes. If you want to sit on the sidelines, you're going to end up on the wrong side. There is no one, there is no one uh, that is not going to be in this, this fight. But we must fight differently. They, as I said in that, uh, that clip, they so desperately want us to strike out. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have a Gandhi yet. We don't have a Martin Luther King. I sat with Billy Graham and I said, Billy, where's the next you? Where is somebody that can call all of us together and we we can gird our loins and lock arms and stand peacefully and with love and face evil. He said to me, Glenn, it ain't gonna happen that way this time. He said, I think the Lord is so sick of people like me getting credit for all of his work that he's gonna go to the people that are just regular people and he's gonna talk to them and they're gonna say, but I don't, I, I don't, I mean, what, what good is that going to do? I don't have any power. I don't have the tools. How many times do you say that to yourself? I say that to myself all the time. I can't do that. I, do, I, I did. That's beyond me. He's not asking you to complete the whole puzzle. He's asking for your piece to be put down on the table. You just obey and put the piece down on the table and come what may. Billy told me, Glenn, think of it this way. The Lord is planning an incredible surprise party for Satan. (laughs) Because Satan thinks he's coming in through the door and he turns on the light and the Lord is like, surprise. And we will all see the mosaic of all of the little people, the foolish, the foolish who have just been obedient in their little ways, in their circle of influence. And it will be a mosaic that will cover the earth. And only the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob could do that. And the world will know God is with us. Amen.
I, I am so honored that you would ask me to be here. And please, please let me be your Aaron to your Moses. Anything that I can do to help hold your hands up, it is people like you Amen. that are going to change the world. It Amen. truly is. Amen. And I want you to know that you inspired me. No. You kicked my butt and reminded me God is serious. The reason why you're doing it is because I must have been too arrogant and didn't listen to him saying after we planned it and it was canceled because of COVID, we just didn't come back to it. And so he found somebody else and he will always find somebody else. If you don't do it, he's got other options. He will not be thwarted. So I want you to know that in the next couple of days, I'm going to be announcing that we are going to make a national covenant. And and it's because of you. And I have been saying to myself every time I think of this, I think, well, we've got to invite all these people. We've got to get all a big crowd there. Where are we going to hold it and stuff? And then I was on the air just the other day thinking about you, and I thought, why would I try to get 50,000 people together when I've got 12 million listening? Why not get the entire world in on this? Yeah. And we will do it. Everything you do, everything you do, good or bad, not only is the Lord watching, but he is also amplifying all of the good. Your small movement that you think maybe is meaningless. I have no purpose in life. Believe me, you were sent to this country at this time for a reason. You may think it's very small, but it will start pushing things. It's dominoes. He's just asking you to do this to your domino. Please do this to your domino when he tells you. Pray to him with a sincere heart. Lord, I will covenant with you. I know you saved me from the wretch that I was. I know everything I have comes from you. I will do what you ask me. And I know you. It's going to be stuff I don't want to do. And I know that in advance. But it is an honor to live at this time, to live here, and to be in his service.